Jesse Redmond Fawcett was born on April 27, 1882, in New Jersey. She grew up in Philadelphia and attended the Philadelphia High School for Girls. She received a scholarship at Cornell University, where she was likely the first black female student. After college, she worked. She worked as a teacher in Baltimore and Washington, D.C. In 1912, Fawcett began to write for the NAACPIS official magazine. The crisis in 1919, Fawcett became the journal's literary editor. Fawcett was active during the Harlem Renaissance, an awakening of artistic output within the African American community. In her editorial role, she encouraged a number of writers, including Langston Hughes. Fawcett was inspired to write a novel after reading an inaccurate portrayal of African Americans in a book penned by a white author. Her first novel, There Is Confusion, 1924, featured African American characters in a middle class setting. It was an unusual choice for the time, which made it more difficult for Fawcett to find a publisher. Rories appreciated her focus on a previously unexamined slice of African-American life, but others scorned gentle settings. Fawcett had married a businessman, ooh, Herbert Harris, in 1929. The two lived together in New Jersey woo, until Harris died in 1958. After Fawcett turned back to Philadelphia, Fawcett was responsible for the development of many new African-American voices. While her novels, essays, poems, and other work meant that she was a prolific author in her own right. What is the Harlem Renaissance? In the 1920s, Creative and electoral life flourished within African-American communities in the North and Midwest regions of the United States, but now where more so than in Harlem. The New York City neighborhood, encompassing only three square miles, teamed with Black artists, electorals, writers, and musicians. Black-owned businesses from newspapers, publishing houses, and music companies to nightclubs, cabarets, and theaters helped fuel the neighborhood's thriving scene. Some of the era's most important literary and artistic figures migrated to or passed through the Negro capital of the world, helping to define a period in which African-American artists reclaimed their identity and racial pride in defiance and widespread prejudice and discrimination. The origins of the Harlem Renaissance lie in the great migration of the early 20th century when hundreds of thousands of black people migrated from the south into dense urban areas that offered relatively more economic opportunities and cultural capital. It was, in the words of editor, journalist, and critic Alan Locke, a spiritual coming of age for African-American artists and thinkers who seized upon their first chances for group expression and self-determination. Harlem Renaissance poets such as Langston Hughes, Claude McKay, and Georgia Douglas Johnson explored the beauty and pain of black life and sought to define themselves and their community outside of the stereotypes. Poetry from the Harlem Renaissance reflected a diversity of forms and subjects. The first poem, Ingima, Fawcett is implying how people have two sides. The theme of the poem is change. This poem contains a lot of symbolism. The title of this is referring to the person to whom Fawcett is referring. Overall, she's conveying the meaning of how people have two sides and emphasize a the theme and need for change. The second poem, Oblivion, it is about Jessie hoping that when her time comes, the hatred and grief will no longer affect her. She wants happiness for death and that way it to be oblivious. Finally, the third poem, Dead Fires, She's explaining how African Americans should fight for their racial equality and justice because it is worth it. She also wants activists to bring change to society. Even if you are suffering from pain, Jesse wants African Americans to fight for what's right for them because it is worth it. It is better to fight for something than live in a society where you are not happy. 
Fawcett's poet, Ren Contre, is consistent in subject, mood, and style. Her poetry, Ren Contre, utilizes the archetypes of love and nature that's not uncommon during the Harlem Renaissance. Many women were turning out this same sort of poem. One critic of the literature of this period has said the most of literature was written in the Romanitis tradition saturated with Victorian ideals. Hi, my name is Jesse Redmond Fawcett, and I will be reading my five favorite poems. These five poems mean a lot to me. There is no peace with you, nor any rest. Your presence is a torture to the brain. Your words are barbed arrows to the breast, and one but greets to wish you sped again. Frustrate, you make desire, an action vain. There is no peace with you, no peace, nor any rest. Yet in your absence, longing springs anew, and hopelessness besets the baffled brain. If only you were you, and yet not you. If you such joy could give as you give pain, then what an unguent for the burning breast and for the harassed heart. What rapture true, if only you were you, and yet not you. There is no peace with you, nor ever any rest. I hope when I am dead, that owl shall lie. In some deserted grave, I cannot tell you why, but I should like to sleep in some neglected spot, unknown to everyone, by every one forgot. There lying, I should taste with my dead breath the utter lack of life, the fullest sense of death, and I should never hear the note of jealousy or hate. The tribute paid by pastors by to Tom's estate to me would never penetrate the prayers and tears. The futility bring torture to dead and dying ears. There I should lie and lay hate and my dead heart would bless oblivion, the shroud and envelope of happiness. If this is peace, this dead and leading thing, then better far the hateful fret, the sting, better the wound forever seeking balm than this great calm. Is this pain's surcrease, better far the ache, the long drawn dreary day, the night's white wake, better the choking sigh, the sobbing breath, than passion's death. Ren Cantre, my heart, which beats so passionless, leaped high last night when I saw you. Within me surged the grief of years, and whelmed me with its endless rue. My heart, which slept so still, so spent, awoke last night to break anew. One way Jessie was important during Harlem Renaissance was that she was the first black woman in the country elected to Phi Beta Kappa and the only black graduate elected to that honor fraternity at Cornell before 1921. She taught one year at Douglas High School in Baltimore. She was highly intelligent, educated, and well-read, yet exceedingly modest and even shy in social circumstances. Fawcett was an impressive and effective teacher. One of Fawcett's short stories, Emmy, showed her interest in the ironies of American discrimination based not only on skin but on invisible black blood and her more extensive concern with the characters due within the constraints.